How you guys doing this morning? That's good. I'm going to be reading the Word of God from Psalm 121. I look to the hills, where will I find help? It will come from the Lord who created heaven and earth. The Lord is your protector, and he won't go to sleep or let you stumble. The protector of Israel doesn't doze or ever get drowsy. The Lord is your protector there at your right side to shade you from the sun. You won't be harmed by the sun during the day or by the moon at night. The Lord will protect you and keep you safe from all dangers. The Lord will protect you now and always wherever you go. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lance. You may be seated. I spent my 20th birthday in the week surrounding it um, in uh, one of the most remote regions of Honduras on the Mosquito Coast. And it was so remote that my birthday dinner um, in the kind of makeshift restaurant that had a just thatched roof and, and I don't, didn't even have a floor, dirt floor, there wasn't even cake. There wasn't even cake, y'all. I had a birthday banana. <laughs> And I have never been more grateful, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Through my campus ministry at Duke, we um, participated in a mission trip to this very remote place in Honduras. We had to travel um, many, many miles from the capital in Tegucigalpa, and we took a flight, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then we got in these big dugout canoes and paddled for hours to these very remote villages that were so remote that no visitors had ever been there. So we slept in hammocks in a building, a shelter that had no doors, no windows, and we used what you might call an outhouse. And no matter um, the care that the women took in the village to boil our water and prepare our food um, so that it would be safe for us. Uh, we all got sick, really sick. We, uh, when, when we, those of us that could, went into the rainforest and hiked into the rainforest and literally brought out the logs that were for the construction project of the school. Now the construction project of the school, we got there and we said, okay, great, who among you is, you know, the ones that are gonna help us learn how to know how to build this school. And they said, no, who among you is going to help us learn to build this school? I don't, the school may not be there any, uh, anyway. Is this a great commercial for a Millbrook International Mission trip? <laughs> so at the end of what was a, a, a long week um, with a lot of beautiful moments, we began to travel back. And this was my actual birthday we began to travel back to the capital, to Gusagalpa, to kind of rest and then um, head home. And we had to take, uh, so back in the canoes, and then we had to take this flight. Now, this plane was um, about the size of my minivan. It, one of the wings was taped on with duct tape. I wish I were kidding. It landed in a field and it had to like beep the horn for the cows and everything to get out of the way. And it was so small, we had to go in groups. And it was so bumpy, in part because I'm pretty sure the, the pilot had been drinking. I prayed every prayer, I sung every hymn I know, and I just knew that if I didn't die, some of my friends would on my birthday. So when we got all together, in that little, you know, dirt floor sh shack or shed and had that birthday banana, I was so grateful. We had been protected. Just Monday, my daughter Jordan and I were driving back from the Outer Banks, you know, just driving back on a beautiful day through Eastern North Carolina when all of a sudden it started raining a little bit and then very quickly started raining very hard. It got dark. It was windy, and 
I went to pull off, and you know how you can get under the underpass and you get a break from you know, all of that rain pelting you and the wind. So many people were already under the underpass that we still ended up um, in the rain. And as I'm pulling over, that, that shrieking uh, emergency alert goes off, tornado watch. If you are indoors, get into the centermost room and protect yourself. If you are unsheltered, find shelter immediately. Beware of flying objects that can cause injury or death. I prayed. <laughs> I took a deep breath. I made sure Jordan had her shoes on and knew how to call for help if she needed it. I got myself together, reminded both of us to stay calm and decided to drive um, to a food lion very close by. And by the time I got there, the sun was shining and there was no rain and there was no wind. God protected us. God is our protector. This psalm, psalm of protection is a favorite of many. Several of you have come up to me already. That's my favorite psalm. In a previous church, I had gone to visit one of my older members who was in hospice, and she had uh, not really responded to anyone uh, for multiple days. And so I came in and just touched her arm and talked to her for a few minutes. And then I said, now, Miss Annie, we're going to, um, I'm going to read a scripture and say some prayer with you. I said, this is from Psalm 121. And she opened her eyes and said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. <laughs> Clearly, it was her favorite psalm. God does protect us in many ways. But these stories aren't quite sufficient for the fullness of God's protection. It's not enough to just say, thank God I was spared. And that's how God protects. Because God does more than that. And if we're truthful, protection isn't all that straightforward. Yes, we can and should be deeply grateful when we are spared hardship or suffering. But the amazing thing about the power of our God is that he is with us, he covers us, even in the midst of hardship and suffering. Graduates, we pray for your happiness and for your success. Today is a time when it is right that you are hopeful and we are hopeful for you and we are proud of you and we wish you well. God has brought you this far and will take you into the next season. Wherever you are going, God is already there. And we also know that in life there are ups and downs. When I was little, about four or five, I would climb the shelves, the bookshelves in my dad's office. I don't know, I was a pastor's kid, maybe I didn't have enough toys or something. So I would just climb up like it was a jungle gym and get up, you know, several to the top of the bookshelf and then with complete abandon go, Daddy, catch me, as I'm falling back, trusting that his arms would be there. And they always were. I told that story in a previous church and one of our young people, I think it was Confirmation Sunday, he was being confirmed and um, he has autism and he was sitting on the edge of his seat and he was looking at me like this and he goes, Pastor Christy, did you get in trouble? <laughs> I said, no, Jacob, but I should have. Kids, do not try this at home. Millbrook, along with millions, we have been shocked and saddened by the death of Millbrook member and golf pro Grayson Murray. Grayson was baptized in this church. His faith was born here and it grew throughout his life. Solid faith in the love of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he came to know at Millbrook. Grayson died by suicide last Saturday. While his career was wildly successful, he struggled with mental illness and addiction. It is a darkness that plagues millions, no matter how successful they are. We couldn't catch 
Grayson. Not on this side. Those that loved him most, his parents, Eric and Terry Murray, his family and friends, loved him and they were there for him. But they couldn't catch him. Not this time, because he could not, he could not catch himself, nor could he call out, catch me. His illness made his brain scramble and distort all the things that he, at other times of struggle, had known was true, that being alive, even with all its challenges, was worth it. Try to think about a stroke or a heart attack, a tragic accident, not a willing act. Grayson was deeply loved, but depression can be a cruel barrier to receiving the love that is there for you. And at its very worst, can cause death like Grayson's. Death by disease, not by choice. Tragic, but not intentional. And still, God's arms caught him on the other side. Because God's arms are always wide enough. Grayson believed in God, and he believed in helping others. He had all the success that is wished upon graduates on a day like today, more of it than most people ever have. But what he knew and what we know is that success in those terms will not sustain you. So it's not enough. Graduates, Millbrook, anyone listening, to wish success in that way. We wish you wide arms. Wide arms to embrace the world, to embrace new experiences, new opportunities, new friendships, new places. Embrace every wonderful possibility in front of you. And wide arms that will reach out whether you're catching someone else or whether you're falling yourself. Reach out, because that's what will sustain you. Friendship will sustain you. Faith will sustain you. Hope, relationships. In a recent interview, Grayson Murray said this, the Lord was looking out for me then, and he's looking out for me now. My story isn't finished. It's just beginning. I hope I can inspire a lot of people going forward who have their own issues. I love the quote, when you're tired of fighting, let someone else fight for you. Have the courage and the willingness to keep going. That's what Grace and Murray said. In his courage, Grayson reached out his arms to catch countless people. The gift God gave him for golf made him a celebrity with a huge following in a high pressure world. And he used his fame as an opportunity to lift the veil of stigma and shame related to mental illness and addiction so that he could help others. Thanks be to God. And even though his illness kept him from being able to reach out when he needed it most, he is still reaching out to catch others through his words, through his courage. His words and his witness live on. The newly founded Grayson Murray Foundation will support those struggling with mental illness and addiction. That extends his arms to countless more for years and years to come. His parents, Millbrook members, Eric and Terry Murray say this, honor Grayson by being kind 
to one another. So graduates, all of us, as we go forth, whatever phase of life you are in, young or old, anywhere in between, be kind. Reach out. You are God's protection for one another on this side. Let others hold you up. Receive God's protection and care for you. Reach out and say, I'm falling, catch me. And reach out to catch your neighbor. Depression, anxiety, mental illness, addiction are not necessarily fatal. Countless people live with them and flourish in life. God wants us all to flourish, not just have worldly success, to flourish as whole human beings, knowing that we are loved. In a moment, we will wrap physical blankets around our graduates in a long time Millbrook ritual of love and care. It's gonna be enacted by their parents, but it's embodied by all of us. This is what we do for one another. This symbol of God's love and care and protection wrapped around each person. So let's do that for each other. Do that for the neighbor outside these walls in need of care that needs someone to reach out their arms. Let's wrap each other up in blankets of love with arms that are wide enough on this side. So whether you're graduating in a new phase of life, an old phase of life, whether you're young or old, whether you're hopeful or discouraged, whether you're at peace or struggling, confident or uncertain, God's love and care and protection does protect you. And we are given to each other to be that physical sign and care of God's love for the whole world and for each of us individually, uniquely created as each one of us is. So reach out, whether you're in need or whether you're caring for someone else. This is how God protects us. And his arms are big enough in his everlasting love. Amen.